Next, we're going to write some introductory code in Python. Start by opening up Python from your Start menu. When you find Python 2.7 in your Start menu, expand it to find the item called Idle, the Python GUI. When you open that, you'll get a window that looks like this. This is the Python shell. Here, we can write some simple code and execute it one line at a time. However, if we want to write some code that we can save, edit later, and reuse again and again, we want to get a script window. Click on File, and then click on New File. A new window will open that looks like this. Don't close the shell window, leave it open. I'm going to place our new file and the shell side by side so we can see what's happening in both of these windows at the same time. In this file, we can write some code, save it, and execute it. Let's do some test code. Let's start with 8 plus 3. In order to run this code, you click on the Run menu and then click Run Module you will be asked to save the code. Find a location where you'd like to save your code. Then, give your code some kind of name. I'm going to call this code Introduction. Notice that when we ran this code, we didn't get any kind of errors indicating that everything ran correctly, but it didn't tell us the answer. In Python, in order to see the answer of some operation you've done, you need to store the result in a variable and then show the variable. So let's change our code like this. We'll do i equals 8 plus 3 using the variable that we've created, i. Now notice that we didn't have to do something like int i before we used it, like we did in C in PSOC Creator. In Python, you don't have to declare your variables that way. Then we'll do print i. Also notice that I'm not ending my lines with a semicolon. That's a requirement in C in PSOC Creator, but not a requirement in Python. Now let's run the module again. You'll have to save the code. And this time we get our answer, 11. So we've seen here already how to use a variable in Python. We can simply set the variable equal to something and then access it later on. For example, I could do now i equals i plus 2 and then I could print i again. And this time we'll see our first i, which is 11, and we get our second i after we've added 2, which is 13. So this is how you use a variable in Python. Let's do two more things in Python right now. Let's see how to do an if statement and we'll look at how to do a while loop. These are two things that we already learned how to do in C in PSOC Creator, and now we're going to see how to do them in Python as well. Here's how to do an if statement. We'll type the word if, then give a space, and then we'll do our conditional here. So in this example if statement, I'm going to check if i is less than or equal to 15. Now, in C, we would have put a curly bracket here to indicate which statements are inside of if. In Python, we do this a little differently. We put a colon after the if line. Now, you have to be careful here not to get things mixed up. In C, we've been using a semicolon at the end of every line, but we do not use a semicolon at the end of a line that is if or while. In Python, we have to use a colon after an if 
or as we'll see in a moment, after a while. So after we have this colon, when we hit enter, you'll notice that your cursor automatically indents one tab. In Python, the kind of indenting that you use matters very much. In C, it doesn't matter at all. If i is less than or equal to 15, let's print a statement. Now, here's where the indenting comes in as being very important. If I want to put more statements inside of this if, I can add statements just by indenting and then putting those statements in. If I do not indent, the statements will not be inside of the if statement. Let me show you an example. Let's run this code. Take a look at what our output is here. We get our 11 and 13 as before. Then we get the statement that says i is less than or equal to 15. And then end of code. Let's now change this number so that the if statement is not true. Let's say if i is less than or equal to 8 here. Now let's run the code. Here we get 11, 13, then we get end of code. In other words, the statement inside of the if i is less than or equal to 15 is not true, so it doesn't print out. Now, let's see what happens when I tab to indent this last line. I'm also going to change this 15 to 8 because now we're not checking if i is less than or equal to 15. We're checking whether it's less than or equal to 8. What do you think will happen if I indent end of code so that it's inside this if? Let's see what happens. This time, we get the 11 and the 13, but nothing else. Since i is not less than or equal to 8, neither one of these statements is executed because they are both inside the if. I'm going to unindent this so that it's outside of the if statement. And now, let's add a while loop. This while loop is going to be executed as long as i is less than or equal to 16. For a while loop, just like an if statement, I need to have a colon to indicate that this while is about to start. Then everything that I want to be inside the while has to be indented. Let's print out the statement inside the while loop. Then I have to make sure that I increment i. So i is equal to i plus 1. Let's run the code. We get 11 from the first print i, 13 from the second print i. We do not print out i is less than or equal to 8 since i is not less than or equal to 8. However, i is less than or equal to 16, and so inside the while loop is printed, then i is incremented by 1. This makes i equal to 14, and so we loop around to this while loop, check to see if i is less than 16, it is, we print the statement again inside the while loop, then i becomes equal to 15, we loop back, Check to see if i is less than 16. It is. So we print inside the while loop again. And we continue doing this until i is not less than or equal to 16. Then the while loop ends and we execute print end of code.
Sometimes it can be a challenge to switch back and forth between different languages, but the ability to do so will give you a lot of power with being able to write the appropriate codes in the appropriate languages for different kinds of robotics tasks. So before we finish today, I'm going to summarize some of the differences between Python and C. First, in C, we had to declare our variables. We had to write something like int i at the very beginning inside of our main function in order to set aside memory for the variable. In Python, we don't have to declare our variables. We can just start to use them. Secondly, in C, we always needed to end every line with a semicolon unless that line was the beginning of an if statement or a while loop. In Python, we don't need to add a semicolon to the end of every line, but we do need to add a colon at the end of lines that begin if statements or while loops. Thirdly, in C, anytime we used an if statement or a while loop, we had to enclose the statements that were inside that if or while in curly brackets. And the indentation that we use was helpful for us, but not necessary. In Python, we do not need curly brackets. Instead, we use the indentation to indicate which statements are inside the if or the while and which are outside. As we work through this class, we'll be doing lots of examples and writing lots of practice code in Python and in C to make our robots work. So if you don't feel comfortable with these languages yet, that's okay. We'll be getting lots of practice as we go.